Hello and welcome to this webinar on botulism, brought to you by Leading Sheep and the Livestock Biosecurity Network. My name is Sarah Jane and I'm the Regional Manager for LBN in Northern Australia. Botulism is a disease that's caused by a toxin produced by a bacterium called Clostridium botulinum. The bacteria-like conditions where oxygen levels are low and where it's warm and moist, hence it proliferates well in decaying carcasses and plant matter. It also has the ability to form bacterial spores. Spores are a very clever adaptive mechanism which help the bacteria to survive in unfavourable conditions. In this case, it helps make them resistant to hot, dry conditions, which means they can viably survive for years in the environment in soil and bones. When the bacteria are growing and reproducing, they produce the botulinum toxin. This toxin affects the nervous system and prevents effective nerve function. The end result of this is a flaccid paralysis. Most animals end up dying from respiratory failure or an inability to breathe, as the muscles that help with respiration become paralysed. All warm-blooded animals are susceptible to botulism toxin, with cattle being one of the most susceptible species. Treatment of clinically affected production animals is generally unproductive, and there are very few successful cases due to the need for high intensity nursing and the impact that the disease has on breathing. The bacteria occurs commonly in, in the soil, but it is also found in the digestive tract of about 20% of normal cattle and other grazing species. This means the bacteria can be spread with livestock movements, property to property or paddock to paddock. Poisoning generally occurs through the consumption of contaminated feed and water. This contamination may occur in rotten or mouldy hay or silage, or feed that contains animal carcasses. It can also occur by directly eating animal carcasses. Clinical signs of botulism will vary from sudden death, where animals collapse and die in a couple of hours, to a slow progressive paralysis, where animals may take days to die. In extensive grazing systems, animals are often just found dead. Stock in the early stages of infection will display wobbly, stiff gait and drooling. Typically they are found sitting or lying, unable to rise, and will have their heads turned towards their flank or have their hind legs extended behind them. Often their tongue will be hanging out and there will be inability to swallow and therefore a pooling of saliva. There are a number of vaccination protocols and products available. Our recommendation is you select that which most suits your enterprise. For sheep and cattle, there is the original vaccination preparation. This protocol involves two initial doses, four to six weeks apart, and then a yearly booster. Additionally now for cattle, we have options that are more suitable for practical management of the vaccination, which includes a single dose followed by a yearly booster, and also now a single dose followed by a three yearly booster. Preventative measures to reduce the risk of botulism include deterring animals from bone or carcass chewing, especially in extensive grazing systems. When phosphorus and protein deficiency is apparent, stock are more likely to undertake this bone chewing behavior. So if you can keep the aggregation points and watering points clear of carcasses and bones, that's best practice. Ideally, we recommend burning carcasses where possible. Firstly, that will help prevent the spread of the remains through predation and will also help to kill any bacteria or toxin. A fire of over 120 degrees will kill both the toxin and the bacteria. Botulism can also occur in the more intensive grazing system if stock consume contaminated fodder or water. This often occurs where rotten organic matter ends up in the feed, as might happen if carcasses such as snakes or mice or other small animals become trapped in hay or silage, or if high moisture feeds such as brewer's grains go rotten. If you're purchasing in feed, be aware of what you've purchased and how it's been stored prior to the purchase, and ideally source incoming feed that is supported by a fodder vendor declaration. If you have any questions on botulism, please get in contact. My email is sjwilson at lbn.org.au. I've also provided some resources on vaccination from MLA, Making More From Sheep 
and future beef. Thank you for listening to this webinar on botulism. If you have any questions, please get in contact.